Hi, I'm Alex. And I'm Olmstead. And today we're going to be designing a sci-fi component for 3D printing. We recently got a 3D printer and have really been enjoying calibrating it, doing test prints, and even printing some custom puppet pieces. Today we thought it would be fun to show you the process of designing a component for a sci-fi prop from start to finish. The first step in creating anything is imagining what it is and what it has to do. Hmm. Hmm. As inspiration material for this project, I made a post on social media asking people to imagine the name of a piece of sci-fi tech and what it does. Based on all the great suggestions, we chose the Suit Yourself Submitted by Kevin Collins. Thanks, Kevin. Thanks, Kevin. He describes the suit yourself as an automatic wound stitcher. Rather than just making some arbitrary futuristic object and saying that it does something, it's always better to let function influence form. So let's now imagine how the suit yourself works. Um, do you have any initial thoughts about what this thing looks like or what it does? Well, on first blush, I think it would need some kind of um, sewing apparatus. Mm -hmm. So something that perhaps has fine needles and medical grade thread. Mm -hmm. Fine needles and thread. Um, I like to think that you know, like a regular suture, you're sewing one continuous thing mm. over and over and over, but there's no reason that the suture itself can't have like a grid of needles that all go in like that. Oh, that's interesting. So that it does all the stitches at the same time, <gasps> you know? It sounds a little painful, but very fast. Right. So maybe if we imagine, let's start with our wound. Mm-hmm. Ouch. So, ouch. Oh, my wound. Here's a little blood. <laughs> ouch. Let's draw a couple extra droplets. Yeah. Um, this is a very spooky thing. <laughs> this is muscle. And this is a bone that fell out. <laughs> ouch. So... <laughs> Is that a rat? <laughs> this is a dog! Oh, perfect. Okay, good. <laughs> he's, he's happy because he's there's happy a bone. happy because there's a bone. Okay, good. So maybe let's start with, we have our wound and we know we want uh, it to be sewn across like that, right? Okay. Um, so best for vertical or wounds or wounds that are nice clean cut lines right yeah we'll 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 go simple we'll go simple so maybe if um there's like because if we're making two holes across from each other mm -hmm. we really want it to be one continuous thing so it shouldn't be two needles that poke down on the same hole right it doesn't need to be no well it shouldn't be because where would that other needle go they'd they'd hit each other well unless they were offset right slightly uh, offset slightly offset like that right um but i think if we do like a needle on this side and a needle on that side and a needle on this side mm -hmm. and a needle on that side mm -hmm. uh, then it it simplifies the whole design okay so let's think do we want to balance it out with five all together or just Maybe an even four. Um, I like I like that it would be um, an even number as opposed to it being capped like that. All right. Um, so maybe if we do uh, three on each side. Okay. So let's let's draw another wound. Yeah. This time I'll draw the wound. Okay. Ouch. Ouch. Oh, spooky. And I'll draw the bone. Don't forget the muscle and. Even and, maybe some sinew? Uh-huh. And here's and the dog. The dog. <laughs> Is that a rat? No, it's a dog. Oh, okay. He's I see. happy about the bone. Because yeah. he's the bone. <laughs> yeah. And let's, don't forget the blood. Uh-huh. And the little droplets of blood. Perfect. Okay, perfect. So, 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 three and three. 
Yeah. So if we want, uh, well, so th three and three, that'll be six lines all together, mm -hmm. right? Um, and this is just our our rough sketch. We'll do, um, you know, more even spacing when we get into the computer. Mm -hmm. So we have a needle that goes in here mm -hmm. and there and there and there and there and there. Great. Um, let's back up a little bit. And how does this thing attach? Let's imagine that the the wound um, that you're putting it on is is like on your forearm. Ow, spooky. Ouch, dog bone. Blood drops. So uh, I sort of see this as like, like it's a, a little thing like that kind of shape uh -huh. that goes over the wound and then um, the needles sort of stick out and are prepped to go in. Okay. And then they'll, they'll go in and shink, 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 shink like that. All right, sure. So we're looking at this. This is sort of like a half dome. Yeah, that may be a little tricky to print because that means we need to print a bunch of support material. So maybe we can imagine it being a little more flat because it's not going over the entire forearm. Right. So if we imagine it being uh, a little flatter with a series of um, needles that are prepped to, to go in. All right. And you're drawing the top of yeah. the suture itself. Yeah, this is right? the top. How does it attach to the arm? So my thinking, hmm, well, an attachment, it and initially it, it appears to me to be an embellishment on the design. Like, otherwise you could just, you know, imagine where it would go and, and place it with an educated guess. Uh, we could do straps. Mm-hmm, that'd be fun. Um, so maybe we could add some little strap holders. Okay. And then run some like nylon webbing mm -hmm. through there. Mm-hmm. Um, I think I have some in the workshop that we can use. So that goes around the arm. Um, and then what activates the the needles to go through? Well, that's a great question. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so it would probably have to be a button. Okay, so we need a button. Either a button or like a pull tab. <laughs> oh, that's interesting. Um, Mm. So sort of like the uh, the little battery safety covers on, on electronic toys mm -hmm. where it blocks the contacts of the battery, but right when you pull it out, it makes contact. Mm -hmm. So that way you don't need to press a button which moves your arm and potentially might cause more damage, mm -hmm. but it pulls a little tab out and then it goes automatically. Yeah, spooky. Ouch. Dog. <laughs> Bone. Bone. Um. So let's let's think about what these needles look like too. Um, if we were to look at it from uh, like the side, uh, we have um, our sort of line of symmetry, mm -hmm. and uh, we have a needle that's like that. Mm -hmm. um, and it's basically like if we were looking at a cross section. Okay. It would have a thread here that then goes somewhere else uh, or to a spool or something. So what's the little carrier that holds this needle? I see. This is a carrier separate from the, the pull tab that activates the stitcher. Yeah, because these needles need to be pushed through or fired through uh -huh. in some way. So what houses the needles uh -huh. to keep them sharp and safe and sterile? Right. So I'm thinking some kind of little um, tiered uh, uh, tube that's pressurized on the inside so it can they can get fired through. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe that means that at the back of the tube there's uh, the little thread that goes off to um, some kind of spool. Well, this would also have to be protected. Right. This is getting quite bulky, Alex. Well, such is the future that we'll be living in. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> 
So uh, maybe there can be like a series, because they don't need to be big spools, but they need to be something. Mm -hmm. So maybe like a series of three spools in the center that have threads go into them. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so that means we can also, um, for this build, maybe we use some like actual, um, not needles, but we can use, oh, um, I thought it stopped recording for a second. Um, instead of using actual needles, we can use some uh, like wire or something, um, straighten it and, and put it in rather than 3D print the, the metal part here. We can design around that. I agree. And then the same way we're, we're mixing materials with the straps. I agree. Yeah. Cool. So I think the next step would be to go into the computer world and make a CAD drawing of this. Any overhangs or unsupported geometry so far? Well, I think we're going to have to um, bring it into Fusion 360 to be able to tell because we're still not sure about like what these angles are. But okay. I think it should be okay for the most part. Sure. I think all we need to do now is just draw some bones. I think so. Ghost pumpkin! Ah! Ah! La, 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 la. Sarah, we're in the computer. Wow, it must have been, must have been that ghost pumpkin. Oh no! We should have buried those bones in hollowed ground. Little did we know. Just kidding. We're just here in the design space. Whoops! <laughs> right now we're going to be using Fusion 360, which is a, a CAD program that I really love um, due to a few different reasons. Uh, one of them being, it's the one that I know how to use right now, but you can do this in any uh, 3D modeling program. Uh, so I'm going to start uh, by um, creating a sketch. Um, and I believe we have our, our actual physical sketch right here. Thank you. Um, so I feel like we want to create this on uh, the, the bottom plane um, as if we were looking top down at it right now. Um, so we're going to create a few sketch elements um, to sort of uh, figure out where, where everything else goes. So I'm going to start with uh, just a center-based center rectangle. Um, and actually, can you... No, I have it right here. So I have uh, calipers right here so that we can take some real-world measurements on uh, what we're going to be making. Um, so first things first, we need to know how big this actual suit yourself oh, is. Oh, interesting. So do you have any instincts on just like holding your fingers apart, how long it is versus how wide it is? It's interesting, like once once we get to like the length of the forearm, it's we're getting close to like armor. Right, like bracers or something. Bracers or um I say is... we keep it we keep it like you would imagine goes in one of those little tins of band aids. Mm, okay. You know, so it's like it's it's good for small cuts. It's not like if you get a huge gash on your arm that like that you need to go to the hospital. This is like a home remedy. You pop it on, it right? It's mm -hmm. only st six stitches. And it's in a sci-fi universe. Right. So maybe uh What do you say about that long? A little bit longer. A little bit longer? Yep. Okay. So that's uh 77 millimeters long. Uh so we'll do 77 millimeters by how wide? Let me see your arm again. And we want this to be able to be printed flat too. Um, so if it gets too wide, we do need to work in that curvature that goes around. But if we're only doing it sort of wide, uh, it can be it can be flat. So I think maybe like that. That looks good. Okay, so that's 25 millimeters. And we're going to do everything in metric because it makes measurements so much easier. Go metric. Go metric. Go metric or go home. <laughs> um, 
No, you can stay here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, hang whatever. out. <laughs> whatever. Um, so we this is our our sort of top view of the suture self, um, and we wanted six needles, correct? Correct. So maybe let's add some construction lines. Three on each side. Correct. So I'm going to make a, uh, a sort of center construction line. Um, and then let's see, we want uh, them to be what probably centered between the centers, right? So basically uh, on a on a quarter of, or in the in the middle of this half and in the middle of that half is where the the um, needles are centered, right? Yeah. So I'm going to make another little construction line there so we can use the midpoint. I'm going to hold shift to lock in that. And then I'm going to uh, mirror that line across there rather than do the whole thing manually again. Tell us a little bit about how you found the center point. Sure. So uh, uh, I took this line, this whole line, mm -hmm. and Fusion 360 automatically snaps to midpoints mm -hmm. or the center, the center of the line. And then I created another line that you can't see because it's on top of a line that was from this point mm -hmm. to here. So then it would snap to that middle point. Perfect. Yeah. There are a number of ways you could do it. You could um, you could do a little um, uh, sketch dimension uh, there and uh, and set it up, um, and we'll be using that later. So now uh, we know we want circles, right? Mm -hmm. um, and oh, ding! Mistake number one. I need to turn off the construction line there. Um, so we'll do a circle that's on this this line here in the middle. Um, and what's the uh, diameter that we want that circle to be? That's the um, uh, the needle holder. All right, well then shall we get a little piece of wire that's going to be our stand-in for the needle? Or should we just make an approximation? We can probably do an approximation. And actually, it's going to be going at an angle. So the profile on that isn't going to be uh, a circle. Because if a circular, if a cylinder goes in a plane at an angle, it's actually going to make an oval. Yep. So we're going to do that differently. But we can add some little placeholders uh, in here where, um, where we can imagine those are going to be, maybe. Um, so uh, what's the best way to do that? Maybe we can add some some points uh, on these lines. Mm -hmm. um, and I'll do my sketch dimension. And we'll do the dimension from this point to that line uh, is going to be uh, our length, which is 77 millimeters, divided by 3, because we want three lines. Is that right? No, it's not, because we also need space on either side. Mm -hmm. So if we want one, we definitely want one in the middle. Precisely. Right? So we'll just do uh, 77 divided by 2. That puts it in the middle. And then we can uh, put one basically in between the two points there. Right. Right? Um, It'll get a little funky because we need to, hmm, I know, let's do this. Let's make another point on this line. And what's the f closest we want to get to the edge? For the first needle or for a needle on either end? For the needles on either end. <sighs> let's say, um, a thumb's width? A thumb's width? My <laughs> goodness, that's 20 millimeters. That's 20 millimeters. That's a lot of real estate. We'll do 10 millimeters. We'll do a a, a, um, a, a little bit of a thumb. Yeah, a baby's thumb. A baby's thumb. <laughs> width. That's right. Um, so that means... Okay, so then we have one here. We'll have one 
somewhere else and uh, or they're there. So actually, this is getting tricky because we're offsetting them. Um, so that means we have basically a line here and we'll have uh, a line at the end. As a, the bird's eye view, there are six needles that just cross through, right? right? And so it's just a matter of placing the points. Right. So I just put, this is basically our end point for one side and the other side. Okay. I'm going to delete this one because I, I imagine that it's going to be wrong, actually. And we're going to put in uh, a little construction rectangle between those points. Um, people that know Fusion 360 much better are probably <laughs> ripping their hair out watching <laughs> our workflow right now. Thank you for your patience. Thank you for your patience. Um, We're so glad you stayed. <laughs> <laughs> um, let me get rid of these ones. Um, so this length is 57 millimeters. I see that because it's it's written right down there. Um, and what we want to do is basically divide 57 into 6, right? Yeah. Um, 57 divided by 6. Um, so that would be one, two, three, four, five, six. Does that make six points makes five segments though, right? Mm -hmm. So what we need to do is 57 divided by five, which is 11.4. So each of these points should be set 11.4, uh, away from each other. Four, five, six, right? So if I do that to that is 11.4. And now that to that is 11.4. That to that is 11.4. Dun, 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 dun. Dun, 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 dun. Great. Bingo. Bingo, bango, bongo. Ha cha cha. Control Z. Whoopsie daisy. Then we'll do. <laughs> uh, great. We'll get rid of that one. We'll select. I'm holding Shift and selecting all of those points because now we can mirror those along this line so that what? they're there. Then uh, we'll basically just be ignoring every other one on each side. And that's where our needles will go, right? One, two, two three, three, four, five, five six. six. It's that simple. <laughs> okay. <sighs> Um, let's, uh, finish this sketch for right now, um, and we'll extrude, uh, that whole rectangle, um, and, uh, how much do we want it to, to come out? What's our, the depth of this piece? Do we need to figure in the space for the needles? Um, maybe, I mean, we can, we can, I think I actually want to curve the top of it. Mm -hmm. Um, but what's the highest point that this, this thing sticks out? Probably a thumb's width. <laughs> Let me measure your little thumb. <laughs> then measure the thumb. Okay. That's, All right. <laughs> uh, for those of you watching at home, that's about 18 millimeters. Now oh. that's... Sticking out. Yeah, that's probably fine. Dang. Dang. That's an 18 millimeter thumb. <laughs> Dang. Uh, okay. All right. Um, but I want to curve that profile a bit. Um, so I'm going to um, do another sketch on this side plane. And we're going to add 
Uh, a conic curve, perhaps. Conic curve? Conic curve. Uh, no, that's no good. I don't want it to be a conic curve. I want it to be like a beautiful, uh, a beautiful arc, maybe a three point arc. Yeah, that's nice. Now that's getting real funky. So it probably <laughs> doesn't want to start right at the bottom. Mm. Um, yeah, so halfway? maybe, yeah, maybe let's, uh, let's hit P to project this side into our sketch. Uh, and let's make a construction line that's, see how that triangle pops up there? Mm -hmm. That means we're at the midpoint of nice. that line. And we'll draw across to the other midpoint. And then we'll do uh, an, a three-point arc from that midpoint to that midpoint, and then up like that. And we'll select that line and, and deconstruct it, as it were. So that's our, our, our side profile. And now we can go to Solid, Extrude, select those profiles, and just cut them away like that. So, dang. Dang. So we're already getting our little, uh, the little look. It's sort of a, a half round plus a little rectangle prism that goes over. Um, and what do you think? Should we go ahead and add our, our strap holders? When in Rome. Well, <laughs> you heard it here first, folks. So I'm going to add a, uh, a sketch to the bottom now so that we're working on a nice, clean surface here. Look at this fresh new start. Isn't it beautiful? So how do you think we should add these, these strap holders? What do you imagine them looking like? So I imagine we need four of them. Mm -hmm. And I am imagining that they go on the length mm -hmm. side. Mm-hmm. So let me hit P to project and select that so we can, that projects those lines into our sketch so that we can uh, include them. Mm -hmm. So we know we're going to need uh, basically a rectangle that, that sticks out like that and then uh, another rectangle inside for the strap to go through, right? Right. Um, so do we need to measure the strap beforehand? Mm. Mm. Man, no, I know a good measurement. A thumb's, thumb's width. width. I believe... We could do a thumb's length. <laughs> That's true. So I believe the strap that I have is... I think I have some that's uh, three quarters of an inch. Mm. Um, so we'll say... We'll make the strap slots, um, or maybe it's one inch. We should probably have the strap material. I would say this is a moment to pause and check our supplies. And measure twice. Cut, cut thrice. Thri what? Nay. Good mistress. Nay. Okay, pausing. Ooh, ah. <sighs> I just felt like I warped through time and space. Oh no! Oh yes! But now everything is different because I have this nylon webbing from the workshop. Everything is different. That's right. So let's measure the nylon. Oh, it's a thumb's width. Oh my goodness. It just about is. This is 18.9 uh, millimeters. We'll round it up to, to 19, I bet, is the, is the ideal nominal width. Mm -hmm. So that means the internal width needs to be bigger than 19. Precisely. In order for it to move smoothly through and about. That's right. So when you're modeling for 3D printing objects, uh, your, your sizes aren't going to be exact because it's depositing material and that material is squishing out a little bit. So you never want to, um, especially with a hard thing, like if you're making a hole in a pin that are both 3D printed. You don't want to make a six millimeter hole in a six millimeter pin because you just need to add tolerance both for life and for the printer and all that. You have to add tolerance for life and the printer. 
Da -na 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 -na. <laughs> So uh, pearls of wisdom <laughs> from Alex with and Alex Holmes. Holmes okay, so if this is a 19 millimeter wide uh, strap, or uh, yeah, 19 millimeter wide strap, let's make it. Um, uh, let's just make it an even 20 millimeter uh, slot. Um, that'll give a little wiggle room. It'll make it easy to put in. Um, we imagine that maybe the assembly line that's making these suture selves. Um, to crank them out easier, it's a lot easier to quickly put a strap through uh, a little bit of a bigger uh, slot than a, a smaller one. So we'll do uh, sketch dimension on this line, uh, and that's going to be 20 millimeters, like so, mm -hmm. right? Um, and uh, let's say it needs to be um, uh, at least... What, do we want any distance between there or just the strap and then straight to the, uh, like, does this line meet up with this line or is there a gap here? Oh, that's fascinating. That is fascinating. I don't, <laughs> <laughs> that is fascinating. Uh, that's, um. I think there should be a little bit of a gap. I, I'll allow it. <laughs> Thank you. Um. <laughs> And we'll say that it's uh, a three uh, millimeter gap, right? Um, and so we can move all of these lines around still because they're unconstrained. This black line here is constrained because we know how long it is and we know the distance between that and the other piece. Uh, but you can see like uh, we haven't dimensioned how uh, wide the strap is this way, mm -hmm. and we also haven't dimensioned sort of where this line is in relation to, to that line. Uh, but we can work that out a little more. Maybe we can jump over to um, if there's a three millimeter gap from here to here, maybe it should be that on the other side too. That would certainly be balanced and elegant. That's right. And so, we're going for elegance in this design. That's right. Um, and what do you say, like another three millimeter on, on the sides? Sure. Okay. Um, and how far away from the edge do we want it to be? I, I don't think as far as this. Mm -hmm. I think, I think the strap is not only affixing the suture self to the location on the body where the suture needs to be made, but it's also stabilizing mm -hmm. the object. Okay. So you want to do another three millimeters and that way that's sort of our sacred geometry number. Yes. Okay. That's three millimeters. Mm -hmm. Okay. And what else has not been dimensioned yet the height of this the height. what's the what's the gap that that needs to to go through it doesn't need to be uh super big maybe maybe a thumbnail's width <laughs> a thumbnail's width uh by my calipers that's about uh 0.33 millimeters that might be a little too small but uh I don't know, maybe th another three millimeters looks pretty well, pretty easy. And then we're sort of staying consistent. So Consistency. Mm. 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 Consistency. <laughs> Great. So all our lines are black. That means everything is constrained. Um, looks like we need to make some copies. <laughs> That's right. But before I do that, I know I want to have some uh, filleted corners. So like here and here, I want that to be a little rounded because we don't want any sharp edges on our medical device that's going. We don't want to cause another laceration when we're trying to suture up this one. Do we want to then fill it the main compartment? We will, but I think I want to fill it that 
as a solid and not a sketch. All right. And I think we can leave this one unfilleted. Perhaps unfilleted, maybe uh, a slight fillet. We sort of did the default fillet on that, but uh, let's see what that looks like for for there. These are radius of one millimeter. That's pretty nice. You can change sort of how filleted something is. It reminds me of the shape of a band-aid. It does remind me of the shape of a band-aid. That's really good. So let's finish that sketch. That looks pretty good. Mm -hmm. If we wanted to, we could also add for strength. Um, we'll go back in here and uh, edit this sketch and we can add uh, some fillets to uh, maybe this inside curve too. Is that necessary? Well, anytime you have a sharp corner like that, that makes for a little bit of a weak point. The more you can mm. round something over, add a fillet to it, it, it makes it stronger. The more you can round something over, it makes it stronger. Generally. In general. <laughs> Pearls of wisdom, That's ladies right. and gentlemen. So I'm going to add, I don't know if this is the most uh, efficient way to do this, but I'm going to add some fillets on the inside of there, and we'll say that's a 1.5 millimeter fillet, and we'll add it to there too. Mm -hmm. uh, we're we'll removed during, uh, we don't know what that means. Um, so now let's remove that, C create negative space. Uh, yeah, but we're, at, we're gonna do that by extruding mm. and, we're gonna, and we're gonna select the profiles that we're gonna be extruding, which are those three. Uh, and we're gonna rotate a little out of the way so we can see what we're doing. Uh, and how thick of, of those straps do we need? Well, let me get my little thumb. <laughs> oh, brother. Uh, How about, um, I, I, I always like to keep the, the, the calipers on hand to see, like visualize how big do I think that that little thing needs to be. Um, I'd say four millimeters high. Or a three. Mm, four, four makes it stronger because this is going to have some pressure. Ah. going against it. So we want a lot of a lot of gripping strength. Good point. Yeah. Um, and we can also uh, fill it this edge here uh, like that so that we're we're adding strength in that direction too. Mm -hmm. See now we have it nice and the whole thing it's it, it gives more surface area that it's uh, distributing that stress. Mm -hmm. And we can also uh, maybe give uh, a little uh, chamfer, which is like a little angled cut uh, on that uh, outer edge, because again, we want we want to give uh, fewer sharp angles, and really we should be uh, adding it to that underside too. So we'll do that afterwards, because we don't want a, a hard piece with sharp edges against our arm. Nine. Yeah. No thank you, actually. Actually, no. Uh, actually, I think that's something that I would not enjoy. So, let's uh, mirror these. We're, or we're, we'll actually do a... Uh, I guess it would be a... Would it be mirror or pattern? Probably, if we were doing a bunch along a line, I'd do a pattern, mm -hmm. but I think I want to do a mirror, and we're going to mirror uh, features, and the features that we're going to select are these two, which are the, uh, are these three, which are the extrusion, the top fillet, and the chamfer. So if we select those in the timeline rather than in here, It'll select them all. Uh, we'll turn our little origin planes on. And the mirror line that we want to do that against is this plane, 
because we did a, a center-based rectangle. Mm -hmm. So if we select that, then it'll pop it over there, and we'll say OK. And now we have two little straps like that. Nice. And now we want uh, these two to be mirrored on the other side too, right? Correct. Correct. So, uh, you know, I don't know if the mirror function, if you can replicate that along. I might just select these three again and uh, mirror them once more. But this time I'm going to have my mirror plane be, uh, be this plane so that it does it over there. Does that work? No, there's, a, there's an error. Compute failed. So that's interesting. Let's see if we can figure out why. Maybe we need to do it a different way. Maybe I can mirror these features and just select the features manually. Can I? It's a little clunky, but it looks like all of the parts of those features got selected. Yeah. And now along the mirror plane, we'll do that. Okay, that looks like it worked. It may not have been the most elegant solution. <gasps> Another error. Well, dang. Okay, let's dang. let's try it again. Let's select those through there, and we'll just do that one. We'll do mirror features. Those three selected. Mirror plane there. Okay, another compute error. Isn't that interesting? Okay, let's do this then. What do we want to do? Explorations. See, this is us learning new technologies. I think if... Okay, let's mm. let's do this. We're going to mirror this entire body. What? I know. So we'll mirror that whole body <laughs> along that plane and say join. And it's a little clunky because we actually made another identical body. If we had done more work to it, it probably would have messed it up, but because we said join, that's good enough. And it's a learning moment. We can research why that was weird later. Um, excuse me, Google, <laughs> why that was weird? Yeah, okay, Google, why that weird? Oh, you should see the results. I feel more lost than ever. Oh, boy. Uh, now we're gonna do another chamfer on the bottom here, and we're gonna select those uh, bottom little profile lines. Chamfer! Yeah. And that should be okay. It's not overhanging too much so that we won't need to print it with supports. Uh, but I also want to... I want to select those inside, insides of the hole so that it doesn't... Uh, oh, we can do the the top ones too because I don't want um, any of these holes to be sharp enough that they're gonna uh, uh, cause any abrasion on that um, nylon webbing. Which is important for structure. Well it's important for the life of the webbing more so. You more don't... so the life of the webbing. More so the life of the webbing. You don't, as you were saying. You don't do that. You just don't want to do that. Yeah. Um, and let's go ahead and round off these corners, too. We'll do a little fillet on the four corners. And maybe even, let's see what it looks like if we filleted the top lines. That adds like a nice sort of futuristic kind of uh, element to it, right? I like it. Yeah. How much do we we want. You can only do it so much and then it and then it's like error that's no and good. And then it I don't starts like that. looking like a an airstream trailer. Mm. 
Uh, and I don't want to cut into mm -mm. those brackets, so maybe just about uh, maybe just about that much. C'est juste. Yeah, c'est juste. No, 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 no. C'est juste. Ah, oui. Great. So we have basically our our thingamabob, our, our main element, but we need to add our needle holders needle holders and our three little spool holders too and i think what might be good for this rather than trying to sketch on the face of this i'm going to do the needle holders as a separate component or a separate body and then move them over into it build it separately then merge that's correct thank you <laughs> thank you now uh so i'll do a new sketch um, I'll do it, uh, actually I'll, uh, yeah, I'll do it on, uh, this plane. It's sort of arbitrary and I'll do it next to it so we can, uh, keep that in mind. Um, so how long are these needles? How long do we want them sticking out of the thingy? About a thumb, <laughs> about one part of a thumb's length. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's about 32 millimeters. Should we say, call it an even 30? <laughs> <laughs> yes, let's. Okay, so let's make a rectangle. Um, <laughs> Use what you know, uh, That's folks. right. And if you have a thumb, then you have a measurement. So it'll be 30 high um, and uh, wide. Uh, I'm just going to say 20 for right now, because really, um, I'm going to be using this as, as like a drawing surface, and then we're going to revolve, rather than making like a cylinder and extruding it, and then another cylinder on top of that and extruding it. We're going to make a sketch, and, and then, then evolve. Revolve. Revolve. <laughs> That's right. Like like when we made the thing on the lathe. Or like we spin in a chair that <laughs> doesn't spin. <laughs> if you can imagine it. You can do it. So uh, basically what, what I'm thinking, um, we're like looking at, at half of it. Like this line is our center line. So we have, uh, if we were to simplify the shapes, it would be this needle part here is this is this also the needle that's protruding out or or is that the length of the holder you know what's the simple solution well you know when i for some reason when i was imagining it i thought we would see the needle points but it looks like the needle points are going to be hidden within this chamber and i also think that that's safer yeah so maybe we don't see the needle points we don't see them great so that means that this can all just be the little pneumatic holder tubes where the needles are held where, and then we can evolve then we can evolve it around a center line. <laughs> so uh, maybe the the thickest part down at the bottom uh, will be, um, let's say, uh, 10 millimeters where it connects. Yep. Um, well, we'll just sketch this in and then dimension it. Maybe that's easier. So uh, it'll be a thing like that. And then it'll go in like that, and then it'll go up like that, and then it'll go in like that, and then it'll go up like that. And that is a sketch. And that's a sketch, right? Now we can dimension it. Um, so uh, we hit D for dimension, um, and we'll pick these two lines here to here. And the most important thing when you're designing a revolve is you're measuring the radius, not the diameter. Right? Thank you. Thank you. So <laughs> that means if we want that to be 10 millimeters, ultimately, we need to put in five millimeters. Because that's the radius. Because that's the radius. Now, if you don't want to do that math, if it was more complicated than that, uh, and let's say that it was 
that for now. You could do 10 divided by two and it'll automatically pop pop to there. Tools. Tools. Tools are cools. And if you know how to know them. Then you won't be a fools. So the second <sighs> step up, uh, if that first one was 10, uh, let's make this one, what, seven? Yes. So we'll do seven divided by two. Tools. Tools. And then the final one um, will be, what do you think? Okay, so it has to safely, it's the final chamber for the needle? Yeah. Let's say that's five. Whoa! Whoa, dang! Dang, ding, error, five divided by two. Thank you. Tools. Tools. So, uh, I think that's good for what it is. Let's finish sketch, and now we can go to revolve, pick this face. What axis do we want to revolve it around? Well, we want to revolve it around... The line. The line. Look at that. It evolved when it revolved. That's right. Uh, we're going to do that as a new body. Excuse me. That's great. Um, and that's just one. Yeah, and so the, the thing about this is we're going to want to do all the hard work, detail work on one of them before we mirror them down the line, rather than mirroring this, duplicating it six times, and then doing the same fillets and everything to each one. So basically we need to get it perfect yeah. right now. It has to be perfect, and if it's not perfect, I'm going to scream! What are you going to scream? I scream! No, we're not really going to scream. Yeah, we were just kidding. If a mime screamed, it would be like this. So, we're going to... <laughs> um, we're going to... Let's take a look at what this looks like. We're going to move this... Uh, and, and scene. And scene. Thank you. Uh, we're going to move that... Just imagining how this is going to connect. Something, something like that, probably. Mm -hmm. This is going to be a little tricky because we're, we're getting some overhangs. And it's always better to try and design without needing to print supports for that. Is there a way to avoid that? Well, the printers are usually pretty good if your angle is is 45 degrees or less or uh, I guess more or less or, depending or... on which direction you're measuring them. But if you're so if you're designing something with overhangs like that, it's trying to print on open space. Mm. But if you're printing at about 45 degrees uh, or within that range, it has more material to print on. So, we'll we'll keep that in mind. Uh, we can even, uh, looks like a little fascinator. It does look like a little fascinator. A little cake topper. Cake topper. Thank you. Um, happy wedding. Yeah. Sweating for the wedding. Um, so it'll basically be that and then multiplied down the, down the row. Right. So let's conceivably, I mean, yeah. We want to make sure that this is the the design that we like. Right. That uh, we want to multiply. Yeah. So I think uh first off, let's add some uh It seems a little big. It seems a little big. Well, we're also zoomed in. Okay. Uh so it's it's always a little hard to to check. That's why I like to have the calipers nearby so I can be like what is what is 10 millimeters look like. Should oh I my mean, gosh, this thing is 10 millimeters? Should I just go ahead and get a sewing needle? Mm, no. Okay. Because we're not going to remember the needles in this version are totally encased. Right. So let's go ahead and uh, round some edges uh, or fillet some edges. 
I think the fillets maybe make it look a little more uh, like medical. Medical, maybe. And less like a wedding. Yeah, it's like keep everything smooth uh, on on those pieces, um, and maybe we can even add some like cool slots on the on the side. You know what I'm talking about? Decorative. Yeah, but they need to look like they have a function. Interesting. So, like, so if our if our suit yourself is is basically pneumatically driven. Mm -hmm. So it has like a little pressurized air canister somewhere in there mm -hmm. that fire the, the needles through. Mm -hmm. Maybe they need some little vent ports. Um, you probably actually wouldn't want uh, vent ports in the needle thing. So we'll add the vent ports to the main body so that the rest of the excess gases can uh, escape through there. I'm making a note of that. Thank you. Um, so maybe those are simple enough. What do you think? Yeah. Okay. Um, so let's, uh, move this guy and we, right now we only want to rotate maybe. How do we want to do this? I want to rotate there and I want to rotate, uh, Let's try 40. Oh, I've rotated in the wrong, wrong dang direction. It's a journey. Mm, not a destination. We, well, there is a destination. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but we can love the what it's like on the way there. Yeah. So 45 degrees, that's about as, as far as we can print without getting super funky. It might already be a little funky. Um, but we also want these needles to... They're just piercing the surface and then coming back up, right? Mm -hmm. We don't want it to, it's not an injection no, tool. No, no. So let's, maybe let's try 45 degrees. Great. Um, and now let's move this. Um, we'll translate it. Up like that. Right, we do, we sort of want it in line with that, maybe, like that, just if we were looking at it from the side. Remind me, this is going to be hollowed out? Um, no, it'll be one solid piece. Okay, that's what I thought. Yeah. So why can't it be embedded further within? Uh, well, it can, but we want to see this, this bottom tier. Okay. And that's the length that we sort of decided on how much we want it to stick out. Right. All right. Yeah. That's fine. Um, great. Great. Times six. Times six. Um, and Uh, we did our, our little math earlier, um, and we decided, what, how far away was it from the end? 10 millimeters? Yes. So how are we going to measure that? Mm -hmm. How about, uh, I know this isn't, isn't great. But that's in line there. So we'll say OK. And I'll say move this and we're, we'll set it in 10 millimeters. Mm -hmm. Right. Then uh, let's go back to our first sketch, edit that sketch so we can just use it as a reference. And these points were 22.8. Okay. Millimeters. Can you make a note of that? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Gonna sketch and we'll go ahead. So let's uh, move copy and we're selecting this body. We want to create. Oh, let's actually do. 
uh, a rectangular pattern. So we want to... A rectangular pattern? Can you even believe it? This is madness. <laughs> uh, and we want to extend it this way. See that? Nice. Um, and Very pretty. Thing? Go. 10 millimeters. Um, well, not on this side. Ah. So ah. What, what, what was our measurement? 22.8 millimeters. So does that mean it needs to be... 22.8 times 2 uh, and negative so that it goes in that direction. Is that indeed correct? It looks... Uh, it looks even. Yeah, but... Um, let's cancel that. Come on, little sketch. Yeah. Give us your answers. Because really, like, it's 22.8 from center to center. I'm, I'm curious. I don't think that's the right way to do it. Let me try and um, make a copy just, just the one of them. Create copy, and we'll do uh, 22.8. Negative. Thank you. Thank you. Tools. And that's center to center. Okay. And we'll say okay. Okay. And now we'll make a copy of this one. Uh, negative 22.8. Make uh -huh. sure we create copy like that. Okay. Getting closer, maybe. It still doesn't look right to me. Well, it doesn't seem to be following the initial design we made for offsetting the six needles. Right. But I'm not quite sure how to rectify that. Yeah. Let's look at it from the top. Give us your answers. <laughs> Well, let's try and uh, uh, mirror uh, bodies, and we'll do this body, this body, and this body. Mm -hmm. uh, mirror plane is this guy, or gal, thank you. Thank you. Uh, and we'll say, okay, and now let's take these bodies and move them oh yeah uh sort of like we did before yeah it'd be great maybe we just manually offset them a little bit yeah i think it's not gonna be perfect but it'll be something maybe if we yeah this is this is where um the uh we are dealing with needles. This needs to be precise. That's true. This needs to be as precise as it can be for this moment in time. Okay, well, it how is about just a prototype. how about we do this? What? What? What are you doing? I know. I we know. We were so close. I know, but I just had a a thought. You're crazy. Simply mad. You're simply mad. Okay, let's. You make me want to do... scream like a mime. <laughs> Let's do, we're going to move it, uh, we're going to rectangular pattern uh, this bade in this oh. plane, uh -huh. and we're going to do s six of them. No. Yeah. I said no. Well, I'm sorry you feel that way, <laughs> but guess what? Thank you for your apology. Yeah. This is your fault. <laughs> um, okay, that we're we're eyeballing it again, but that looks that looks like pretty good spacing, right? Pretty good. So then we'll 
zigzag. We won't zigzag, but per we se. will. Okay, so now we have all of these as new bodies, and now we'll mirror, and we'll mirror uh, every other one like that. Our mirror plane. Oh yeah, we're we're getting it. We're getting it. Um, let's hide that body for a second. We'll mirror that plane over there. Thank you. Uh, two, four, and six, right? Mm -hmm. As new bodies. We'll say, mm -hmm. okay, we'll bring that back. We'll hide two, four, and six. <gasps> and there we go. Yeah. Snaps. Snaps. Big snaps, big claps. Nice. So it's really coming together. Dang. Dang. <laughs> so what's left? Uh, well, we talked about a little spool section, but now that we don't see the threads of the needles... Um, I think the spool section can be implied. I th think so, but I think it does need something here in the center. What about vent parts? Vent ports. Ports! <laughs> vent Excuse me, let me just read my handwriting. Vent ports! Well, let's add some vent ports. Um, <laughs> Probably you don't want them shooting up at your face. Nine. So but maybe along the sides. they should go on the sides. So let's make a new sketch. Oh yeah, I'm feeling it. I'm um, feeling it. I want the world vent to know. Ports. I'm gonna vent these ports. ports. I'm special. <laughs> um, vent ports. So how do we want to do these vent ports? Let's do some simple. Uh, circular vent holes, right? Or do we, do we want... I want them to be ovular. Ovular, okay. Mm, let's do simple. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I just wanted to... <coughs> just wanted to hear that out loud. Right. Um, so let's add... Uh, let's first P project uh, some geometry in here as reference. Um, we'll do uh, a construction line from here to here, and then we'll do a circle on the midpoint huh? like that. Maybe one that, uh, uh, let's say that it's 10 millimeters. Um, and then... <gasps> what, if, <gasps> what if our vent ports are shaped like little bones? Interesting. Sure, why not? I mean, that was part of the original inspiration. Great, I love it. So let's do a, a center-based rectangle that's on uh, the middle here. Uh, it's about um, like that. We're sort of eyeballing these. And then we'll add little circles like that mm -hmm. and then we'll um mirror uh mirror these two thingies along that line and that's our little bone oh port oh my gosh nice it's adorable we gotta do a fillet well first we need to extrude <laughs> Excuse me for jumping the gun, mm -hmm. for putting the cart before the horse. Thank you. For okay. icing the cake before uh, it's been baked. I don't know. Okay, so we'll select those uh, profiles. Time to extrude. Uh, yeah, and we'll extrude in the other way, uh, just a millimeter and a half, like that, cutting into it. So this is not only a vent port. It is also branding. <laughs> um, looks pretty great. Yeah, it looks more like a logo than a vent port. That's why I like it because it's form and function. Now, do we want it to go in or come out? Whoa. I mean, maybe that's the button that you push to activate rather than the little pull tab. Well, you t we talked about this. We don't want a button. That's true. We want a pull tab. Okay. 
That's been decided. I know. <laughs> okay. Thank you. So bone vent port on one side. Does it have a bone vent port on the other side or just on one? Naturally. <laughs> Great. So let's, um, let's, I love it. Mirror, um, mirror that extrusion, uh, features, mirror that feature along, I know there's a shortcut to hide that stuff, but I, I haven't learned it. Um, we're learning right now that's before right. your very eyes. Thank you for your patience. Uh, we have that. We have that. Golf clap. Thank you. Um, and now I feel like um, that's pretty good. We wanted the the chamber. Do we need anything on the chamber on top? We talked about adding the spools, but one thing that I really like about like good sci-fi design is a combination of of complex next to s simple. Mm -hmm. So to have like this is all very complex and this is complex and the bone vents and everything. So to have like something that's just clean on top is really nice. Drops of blood? Uh I think that might be a painting thing afterwards. I can paint it? Uh yeah. Absolutely. Um, how are we? How are we feeling about this? I think it looks great. I mean, the only lingering question would be the spool mm -hmm. section. Whether we want to just imply that as being a, embedded within the object, or if we would like to create a spool top. At one end and at the other end? What if, okay, I have an idea. Okay. This is getting fancy, y'all. We'll share it and we'll think about it. I think it has a spool that drops in the center. Okay. Hear me out. I'm listening. Let's make a sketch on this plane. Still listening. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Um, You're not talking? Uh, I'm not talking. Um, okay, hey. we're making a, a sketch that's on this plane. I'm taking a look at something right now. Okay, we're making, like I said, we're making a sketch that's on this plane. The sketch is on this plane. Okay, and uh, let's make a little center line. Thank you. You're welcome. Says Fusion 360. Um, and we're going to make um, we're going to make uh, we're going to make a thingy. We're going to make a thingy. Revolutionary. I know. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so polite. <laughs> let's make this 12 millimeters and we'll turn it into a regular line. And you just want to do one, you said. I Wait. mean, I like the idea of two to balance it out. What do you mean? One on each side. Oh, well, uh, but come, hear me out. Yeah, I hear you out. Thank you. Um, I want this dimension to be here to here. Uh, no, to here, uh, and that's to the center, so that's actually an extra 6. We'll say that that's uh, 16. Um, select that, mirror uh, along that line to give us that. We'll add uh, a couple lines in. Uh, in here. What's he building? In there? <laughs> What's he building in there? What's he building in there? And then we'll add that to the... here. 
Now why can't I see that? You can barely see it. Yeah, barely. Barely. <laughs> we'll turn those lines uh, back into real lines. Um, and then I want to revolve. What? Yeah. Hear me out. Eh? Eh? <laughs> Speak up. Can't hear you. <laughs> Uh, I want to revolve. I'm getting excited. Get revolve that. We're all getting excited. Where's the popcorn? Around there, uh, as a new body, because we're gonna use that as a tool. Excuse me. Yeah. Um, can you make a note that that was a popcorn? Oh, yum. <laughs> uh, that was a uh, ten mill. Was it a ten millimeter? That was a. 12 millimeter circle. All right. Um, we'll turn that body back on. Uh, we'll take this body and move it. Um, like so. Cause I want to, I want to cut it out as Dave Coulier would say. Nice. Uh, we'll say like that. I'm special. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we'll move that there. That looks kind of cool just the way it is. That looks really cool, Alex. Well, dang, maybe we just do that then. I mean, your idea is very cool. Even if this wasn't, what if was going to be. That's where the gas canister is. That's what holds the compressed air. Nice. Very nice. Nice smooth edge. Yeah. Do we want to put some fillets on the bone? Or is it perfect? I think the bone looks good with just nice, nice crisp. Do we need to move it down a little bit? The bone? Mm -hmm. Nah. All right. Unless you want to, but I think it looks good. Nah, I'm good. Nah, I'm good. Okay, well, what do you think? Do we need to imagine a place for the pool tab? Yeah, let's make a pool tab. <laughs> let's make, excuse me, I said pull tab. Let's make a pull. Pull tab. Let's make a pull tab. What side do you want it to pull out of? This one. Okay. Uh, so the way we want to do that, maybe, mm. let's make a sketch on, uh, on this plane. Right here, we're going to cut out a slot. Speak of the sun, for here it shines. That's right. <laughs> and we're going to make, uh, we're going to make a line that's an arbitrary length, but it's going to be at 45 degrees. Mm -hmm. And then we'll make uh, another line uh, off of that that's at a, a right angle, and then a line that's uh, right angle to that one. Um, Do we want it to stick out this much? Uh, it's fine. not going. Well, it's not going to stick out at all. Excuse me. Yeah. We are making. This is fascinating. Uh, so we'll just do that. Um, we'll add some more constraints. We'll say that, um, uh, these, this line is perpendicular to that, uh, and that to that, that's over constrained because the other three sides were already good. So we're okay. All right. Uh, now we need to say how, how, um, how big is our slot? A thumbnail. A thumbnail. Uh, we'll say that a thumbnail is... Uh, let me measure your thumbnail this time. Do this one. Uh, yeah, that one's the nice one. You can't see this on the camera, but she's got a real messed up thumbnail. Uh, I don't like to talk about <laughs> it. Uh, we'll say that that's, uh, 0.8, uh, millimeters. 
Now that may be too small. Do we want to give it some room? Say, we'll point say 10? one point ten, which is uh, which is smaller. <laughs> That's point one. <laughs> we could say it's one millimeter. Okay. <laughs> uh, so we'll say that's uh, one <laughs> millimeter, um, and uh, we'll have we'll p project in that geometry, um, and we'll say that this line is tangent. Will it let us do a tangent to that? No. <clears throat> Excuse me. Mm. Let's see if we can p project in. No, it won't let us do that. Um, it won't let us p project. Yeah, so we'll just estimate there. Um, and how deep do we want this tab to go in? Let me see your thumb. <laughs> Probably 14 millimeters. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, we'll distance measure this to this, and that is 14 millimeters. It got us a little, little bit wonky here. It's a little wonky, but it'll do. Yeah, it'll do. Um, Fill a chamfer. Uh, well, we want to do, let's do that. And because that's a, on it was sketched on our center line, we want to extrude these profiles uh, as a cut. Uh, so we'll do it symmetrically and see how that's making a nice. a nice little slot. Perfect for a pull tab. That's right. And how wide is our pull tab? I'd say about... <laughs> <laughs> now measure the, the nail itself. The nail itself is... Uh, 13 <laughs> millimeters. So we'll do 13 divided by 2 because it's symmetrical. Use what you know, folks. That's right. Use, use what you know and blues what you don't. You could probably fit a coin in there like a dime. That's true. Maybe it's a coin-operated suit yourself. Now that's fun. Now that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Should we make a little coin slot that you can twist off the bottom? Uh, that may be getting more into the complicated. Maybe this is enough. Yeah. I, I think that this is enough. enough. This looks great. Let's go ahead and save that. Um, uh, new folder. Suture. Uh, Sci-fi uh, props. Nice. And we'll name the, the suture. Is that how you spell suture? S-U-T. Ye R E <laughs> suture self. Wonderful. So now the next step, uh, well, first, all of these are, are different bodies. Uh, and I want to uh, I want to combine them all so we don't have weird geometry where it prints things uh, in combination with each other even though they're connected. So I'm going to... Can so, you explain that a little bit further? Sure. Uh, so right now, all of these here are separate bodies. This, Got it. This main thing is a body. Uh, each of these things is a body. And if you look, they extend down into each other. Like in the 3D space, they're taking up the, the same space. Um, and when you 3D print something, it prints a shell, but it also prints an infill. And this, it might get confused and print the shells inside each other when really all we want is the outer shell and the infill. That, mm -hmm. that sort of speeds up printing. It keeps everything nice and clean. Mm -hmm. um, so, Thank you. Yeah. So I want to combine uh, all of these visible bodies. And we'll take a quick look around. Looks final like check. all of the visible bodies are combined. Uh-huh. Uh, and we'll uh, join that. Um, maybe we even want to say this is a new component. Uh, Fancy and yeah. simple. So that way it preserves all the individual components. Thank you. Uh, actually, uh, maybe. Oh. Um, 
We'll see. I'm still learning this program. It's a journey. So now we have to bring this component into our slicer, which will take the 3D model, slice it up into layers, depending on the parameters that we give it, and then create the G code, which the printer can read. We are nearing the printing phase of this creative project, folks. Y'all, we're at about the quarter way mark. <laughs> <laughs> Stay tuned. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the way we're going to do this is uh, right click on there, uh, save as STL, and we're going to click on send to 3D print utility uh, rather than uh, save it as, as a separate thing and open it up in Cura. Um, since I already have Cura installed and, and ready to go, once I click OK on that, Cura should launch, and then we'll be able to take a look at the printer profile and figure out what settings we, we want for this. And there it is. Voila! Et voila! So uh, usually Cura um, brings in my models sideways, um, so you need to just select it and then rotate it so that it sits flat on the printer. Uh, and I'm going to bring mine a little up to um, to the front there. And it's nice and even. The red here is giving me information about what would require supports. But because things are at a 45 degree angle, I feel pretty confident that we're not going to need any supports. Even these uh, bits that are set in, I think they're so um, they're so shallowly set in. The only part that may cause a problem is the top of that bone because it's going to try and print in midair. Um, oh, that's going to be interesting to watch. So drama, drama. Well, what we could do is uh, fix it now. Um, which maybe we should do. What do you say? You know, if you if you're thinking about it this much, I yeah, probably should do it. Probably should do it. And I think the way we're going to do that is super simple. Add some chamfers to chamfer to these outside lines. We'll go over to the other side and grab them too. Chamfer. Chamfer. Chamfer them if you got them. And you got them. That's right. That's right. So we'll just drag that back. Now that makes it pretty big. I think what I actually want to do is select these inside uh, pieces to chamfer. That's correct. That's all a learning experience. Thank you for joining us on the journey. On, on the, the, the journey. The, the journey. <laughs> oh, so late, dog bone. Mm -hmm. See, and now, uh, could not be good. Okay, so that's tricky. How about... How about this? How about this? Let's take this selected profile uh, and we'll push-pull... Make it a so, little less steep. So that it's only sticking out a half a millimeter. It's still doing what it needs to do. Yeah. It's not really the... Um, uh, it's one millimeter. It, it was leaving it one millimeter. So if we check oh, here okay. to here, okay. minimum distance 0.5 millimeters. Great. Um, yeah. I think if we were to make those vents they should probably have little holes in them or something but right well, now it's it's a here we go folks <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't look great though no so perhaps it is not necessary for this design we oui, let us we'll deal with that 
in the next design. In the next design, we did, we explored, we did not like what we found. Right. We don't need to use it. So we'll go back up here, uh, save the STL, export to 3D printer, utilité. Even though that, is that highlighted in some? Is that okay, the bone? Mm. Let's see. Should be fine. The bone? The bone? The gecko? Inside jokes. Uh, we'll do that. That bone looks more reasonable. Mm -hmm. And still achieves what we wanted it to achieve. Mm -hmm. Just mostly a design look. So the slot, that's going to be an issue. I don't think the slot will be an issue because it's at 45 degrees. Okay. So it has material under it that's going to be supporting it. Okay. So all of this looks pretty good. Um, up here, our, our print profile, we'll do it at 0.2, mm -hmm. which is uh, a layer height of 0.2 millimeters. Um, you can, the, the smaller your millimeter, your layer height, the finer the resolution of the print will be. But I find I don't see a big difference between 0.2 and 0.16. And um, it gives an all around good, uh, uh, good print. And I think we'll turn um, the infill We'll keep it at 30%. Um, you can you can spend uh, a long time getting into all these settings and everything, but I think um, everything is pretty good. Uh, we're just going to have a skirt as the build plate adhe adhesion, so it'll make a little line around it because um, we have enough surface area that I feel like it's going to be okay. Um, so we can rename this as the suture self. And let's slice that to get an idea of, great. So it's estimating that it's gonna be two hours and 37 minutes and take roughly seven meters of filament. So now we can uh, save to file. We'll just save that in uh, my downloads folder like that open folder. It's there. Hurrah. So now the next step, we're going to pause real quick and uh, make sure that the printer is all ready and then we'll bring it into Octoprint. So pause. And we're back. <laughs> did you miss us? I hope you did. I wish you would. <laughs> So the great thing about uh, Cura that I really like that I want to point out too is you can you can once you slice it you can preview uh, the G code how it's going to slice so you can get an idea of are there any problem areas in here uh, everything looks good so now I'm going to uh, I have Octopi or uh, Octoprint set up that's uh, basically a Raspberry Pi computer that I have hooked up to the Ender 3 Pro so then I can interface with the printer via my web browser rather than save it to an SD card and go back and forth popping in the SD cards. Uh, so I'm just gonna drag in the Suture Yourself G code uh, locally here like that. Then I can hit print and it'll already start warming up the bed. Then it'll warm up the tool head and then it'll print. Um, you can even check in the uh, G-code viewer in here, sort of a bird's eye view of kind of like what we saw in Cura, where you'll see the toolpath itself, how it's going to build everything up layer by layer, which is kind of neat. You can see like the green lines, the, the path that it takes from here to there to do all that and there. It's pretty hypnotic to watch. Uh, but we're not going to make you watch. Um, two hours and 45 minutes of printing, we'll do a hyperlapse. Ready for a hyperlapse? Ready, Alex. Beep, boop, 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 beep, boop, boop, boop. Beginning in... Three, two, two one. one. <laughs>
The 3D printer we're using is an Ender 3 Pro, made by Creality. The last time I looked into 3D printers, they averaged around $600 to $1,000, so I was really surprised to see that you could regularly find this model for around $200. A spool of filament is around $15 to $20, and lasts a pretty long time. You can print with a few different materials, but the most common, and the one we're using, is PLA. PLA is strong, really easy to print with, and it's actually biodegradable under industrial composting conditions. There's a really great community of 3D printer enthusiasts around the world who regularly design upgrades and modifications for the printers themselves, and release the files for free on sites like Thingiverse. One of the neatest things for me about getting the Ender 3 Pro was printing cable chains, clips, tool holders, and a side spool holder to make the machine run smoother and keep things tidy. It's also really hypnotic to watch. And the grand reveal of the Suit Yourself. Ta-da! Ta-da! Ding, 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 ding! I love how this turned out. It's so, um, uh, it's a, kind of what I imagined, but also being able to see it in three dimensions really makes me think uh, differently of it. These remind me a lot of sort of like Fallout uh, 3, Fallout 4 style Raider armor with like bolts sticking out of it. But the next step, of course, is testing to see how it fits in the real world. Sarah, do you have any lacerations? I happen to have one right here. Oh, wait. Uh, uh, I happen to have one. Ouch! Ouch! My arm! <laughs> oh, no. Oh, well, no, it's bleeding. Well, good thing we don't see any bone or dogs <laughs> and <laughs> thank goodness we have the brand new suit yourself tell me more well all you have to do is slip your little arm through there <laughs> uh -huh. and then we tighten up on the bands here is that a comfortable fit that is a comfortable fit and now all you have to do is pull this little tab <laughs> did you feel the needles barely oh Oh, not all the needles fired. Here. Ow! <laughs> there it goes. <laughs> I felt the needles that time. That's right. And we didn't add thread, so the needles just hold it in place until you're healed. So you'll have to keep this on for about nine months. Don't hit it because there are needles in your arm. Ouch. Ouch. <laughs> so, now that we have this prototype, the first prototype, what would we change about it? Great question. One thing I would change, I notice here on the underside, it's, it's not as smooth as the top because it had to print on that undercut. Uh-huh. So I would probably print the needle holders separately and then print the base with holes in it so that they could pop into afterwards. It would be a little more post time, but I think uh, the needle holders would turn out nicer. I also think um, the spacing on these little um, strap holders could be set in a little more. That's a little more gap than we need. Uh-huh. I agree. I think the bone looks really nice. I think the bone is great. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm pretty happy with it. I think the suit yourself is ready for market. Ding! Thanks, Kevin. Well, we hope you enjoyed seeing the process. We're still relatively new to the 3D modeling and 3D printing world, but we're so excited to try out these new technologies. If you enjoyed this video and liked seeing the process of creating a sci-fi component and want to see more, uh, suggest another component down in the comments below. We may even build your idea. Hmm. Hmm. How novel. Hmm. Hmm. 
Thanks for watching. Thanks. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Thanks for watching. <laughs> Thanks for watching. watching. Thanks for watching.